Okay, let's start. Then, good number. Um, meeting notes. Status. Uh, um, demos. Demos and topics. Who's got some demos? I believe Jasma has a, a, an update on the, the new admin theme. Okay, Jasma. Yeah. If Sipka believes you've got an update, then Jasma, you will do the update. <laughs> and maybe we should discuss uh, Harvest. Uh, it, it, today being August already. Okay. Um, status. Do I have any other topic? Uh, I don't think so. Um, Are you sharing your screen, Sebastian? Yes, right now. Good? Yes. Um, Just not to forget about it. Open. Um, so, 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 Orchard 1 since last week. Uh, not much. We didn't do a triage because I had to go to the airport. Fixed typo. Yeah, so the word occurred was uh, wrongly used everywhere. So now it's fixed. Not sure I won't do the same mistake again later, but at least this one is fixed. And uh, Jasmine worked hard on the admin theme. And you will show it to us later. Okay. Good. Um, Orchard 2. And this one. Seven days, so it was just me. Um, what did I do? Uh, fixing differentiator support. Um, okay, I fixed some things. Um, I shape this, we don't care. Ordering fields, part. This week here, this is what I worked on. And I will show you. Refactoring, this is just refactoring. Um, this one is a big one. This is about grouping part shapes in the editor and fields. This is just Klima code, and what I'm working on is what we talked about last week. So I will just show you um, the update. I have it running here. So I've been uh, so for those who were not there last week, uh, we talked about being able to order uh, parts in the editor, like we have in Orchard One with a custom screen, uh, but not the same way as we do it in Orchard 1. And it um, it's very important, I will show you why. Um, it's very important because, sad thing is that, let me see if I can hack it, because I'm running in a version that doesn't have the feature that, um, will show the issue. So if I go on content parts, or here, yes, you see address, for those who were not at last week, address is a reusable, reusable part. So it's a part, but we have a property called reusable, which means we can attach it multiple times on a type, okay? And it has two fields, city and street. Okay, it's an address. And on the type article, we only have one, because I removed one, 
I'm so clever, uh, but it's shipping address of type address, and you can add a part and say I want um, a non-reusable part like body or title or uh, another address, and then you give it a name like uh, being address. So you will have two parts of the same type attached to the um, to this to this uh, content type, but they have a name. Now parts can have names like themes. Um, and the issue that happens now is when we edit an article. So now it's fixed, but the, the, the issue was that you will see city street and city street, but there was no way to know if city street was from shipping address or billing address. There was no notion of shipping address and billing address. Because when you look at body, for instance, which is also a part, we will show the body property and the text field, but there was no way to know it was from the body part. And this field is actually also in the body part, so there was no way to group them. So the, the change that uh, uh, that is done in this commit is that now when the parts are rendered in init mode, their um, shapes by default target a group like a, a wrapper shape which will be per part and this way we can customize one what we display for each part that is rendered so in the case of a reusable part i'm just using the display name and using the description okay the shipping address which is customizable and then we know that now the city and the street are for the shipping address and we also um, know that now this is the body part but this can be changed and these fields are attached to the article part, which is the custom part for this type. So the fields that are attached to a type are actually attached to a part with the same name as a type. It has always been the case, even in Orchard 1. It was just a hidden implementation detail. And now it reflects here because we show the part type. But anyone or as a, as a default value, we can change what is displayed in uh, content part. Where is that? Uh, not here. It's in the contents module. Content part edit, which is actually displaying the group of uh, parts. So here it's displaying the part display name in H5 with a description it, if it has one and then all the shapes for this part. This is why we see the part display name with a description if it has one, it doesn't have one, this one has one, this one has one, okay, and we display them. So for instance, if we just want to show the titles for the parts which are reusable, we could do something like uh, uh, get, the, well, it's on the content type part definition, there is a setting called reusable, so we can do if dot reusable. I'm sure it will work here. Usable. So we can ask if the setting is if the type definition is reusable and then do stuff differently. Okay, if you want to remove um, these titles for the single parts, uh, we can also change the UI to show an expando and things like this. So it's just uh, to show what we can do. So this is very important for grouping. Um, and we can, so how it works, how do we target uh, the group or like, you see these shapes, save and publish button, they are from a part, they are from a part driver, no, they're actually from a content item driver, but they are displaying their stuff, not in a part group. So how it's done is that um, if I look at the title part, for instance, the body part, driver, In the edit, we just return a shape, and we don't specify any location. Okay? If we don't specify location for the edit shapes, the default location will be inside the part group, or this shape, the content part dot edit shape, and ordered. Um, well, you can yeah. Uh, in this case. This is the only shape. So there is no order in this case. 
I have to check. Um, but this is how you target the, by default you don't do anything. And if you want to target a specific zone, like the content, then you can do dot location content after, for instance, okay, or content one. It will be outside of the, um, the part group. So that's how it works here. And, 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 and the ID is that these elements now can be ordered. So when we go to the type and we edit the article, I'm working on that so it's not yet done, uh, it's just displaying the list of fields and parts, not the editors for the parts or the fields directly. So for two reasons, because first I think it's easier to understand what is on the article type. If you look at what we had before, every field um, configuration or part configuration was displayed in each block. Okay, so when we did the type, we will see all the configuration directly there. So now we just manipulate fields, like add fields and remove them, and then we can edit a field to edit its configurations. So if I click edit, run right there is just display name and there might be also description, and there will be the editor for this field there. Okay, this is what I'm working on right now. So it, the logic is already implemented, but it was when I'm moving the, the pieces. And same thing for parts. When we edit the part, we'll edit the settings for this part and this type when we click edit. Right now it doesn't work. It just shows it doesn't work at all. Um, but it should work later. And we can add parts or remove parts. And the idea is that now we'll be able, and it's not impl yet implemented, to move parts around. So we can say body first and then shipping address and then being address. And then it will be reflected um, when we edit the, the type. So body, shipping address. Okay, that's the idea. Internally, it works by just setting um, a setting on the type part definition, that is location. And the location will just reflect the order that we define in the, in the UI. Okay. Um, and we can also reflect the, this um, this uh, order in the in the display if we want uh, to organize the parts. And if there is a, a theme override, then it will take the theme override and not the default one that has been defined in the in the UI. Um, and so we do this. So we do that for the parts inside the content type, and we we'll do that also for the fields inside the part. So same thing, shipping address. We defined two fields, city and street, but probably you want street to appear before city. So to be able to do that, same thing, when we we'll edit the parts. Um, you see, this is how it looked like before. I haven't changed this view yet. So there will be just a list of fields, city and street, and we can uh, reorder them. Um, that's the current status for that. And the reusable parts is what we call the blocks uh, when I showed that to, uh, when I showed Craft CMS two weeks ago. Okay, just reusable part. That's it. Questions? Um, the chat. If parts have names, what's the difference with fields? Um, uh, good question. Don't worry. It, uh, it bothered me like for two full days, trying to understand uh, some, something which would work and made sense. So the um, main idea between fields and parts is field is the thing that can't be reused. It's just the last element of the the leaf in the tree of things of definitions. Uh, this is the the piece of data that can't be aggregated out of other pieces of data. It's like it's like the value types in C sharp. You can make types out of it, but you can't say, oh, I want. Uh, uh, so if you want to create a new element that you can reuse, this is the thing that you can reuse. And parts are completely dynamic. They can be defined by code to add some behavior 
or by metadata in in the code to to define one dynamically, but they are just aggregates of fields plus custom behavior and custom UI. And they have names. Parts. Of the yeah, I I understand. And yeah, it's might not be the perfect way to think about it either, but uh, it, it, it told you to me two days of thinking. And um, yeah, because at some point I was like, what's the block? Is it, is it more like a field? Is it more like a part? And that's why in the end, um, yeah, parts also have data that are not from the field. I agree. They can, yeah. And, and dynamic ones just have fields, actually. But the ones from code, parts also have data is not from field. Should they have data that are not from fields? Uh, I think it's just an easy way to to build parts from code. If you say they don't have fields, you can just write a POCO and it will be serialized. They can already be pure containers if they are dynamic. If you just say new part from the UI or from the metadata. I think it's it's easier in terms of development to be able to say I create a class and this is my my data storage. I don't need to use text fields and settings and whatever. No, no, I can just say this is my custom things. Yeah. Okay. And but the nice the nice things I uh, the nice thing I think now we have is that every part has a name and a custom name. It's just an implementation detail that the non reusable parts have the name of their part. Like in an article type, the title part is the thing which is named title on the content type. Same thing for body. And for address, you give it a name, like shipping address, being address. But they are all the same parts. It's just a metadata that drives the UI and the behavior of the code to say, I can add multiple this part multiple times or not. If it makes sense or if it doesn't make sense, because it doesn't make sense to have multiple titles. It has a behavior. It should only find one. Um, yep. Other questions? In terms of UI, also. Um, the next step on the article on the type, for instance, will be to show tabs. So when we see fields here, we could see or somehow show the tabs and move fields around tabs and reorder them across tabs. So far, I'm not handling that, but uh, it, could, it could be an improvement. The, the, an improvement, the code will totally uh, support that. Um, also, I was thinking about having kind of a more complex uh, type part field edition experience, like having sort of a tree or navigation of types in the full page, like a spa application where we drag and drop things, and but uh, more complex, and I don't think it's adding anything. So it can still be changed later, because it's just a UI a module de uh, defining the UI of editing types and fields. Uh, we can do experiments, but so far, I'm just focusing on the same thing as we had in Ultra 1 to make it st straightforward and uh, simple to implement and to understand. Um, good. Um, next. Um, oh, while I'm on Orchard 2, uh, um, an update also on what's happening. Um, apart from what I'm doing. Um, so Nick is submitting the pull request for uh, recipes, just so that you see what's happening. I click on Chrome, I don't need to click on Chrome. Pull request, so two pull requests. First one is from Nick here. So this is what um, a recipe looks like. So, in his, uh, so this is a recipe that he created. It's a, it's a, it's a setup recipe, uh, name, description, author, also metadata. Uh, is setup recipe true like in Orchard One? So we can say, oh, this recipe is for setup. So we show it in the in the setup. Um, categories. 
Uh, I'm not sure why it's used actually. Uh, it changed it from category to categories, but I'm, I don't know where it's used. Maybe in the modules UI, okay. Uh, tags, I don't know also where it's used, just maybe for on display. And steps, steps is an array of step, an array of JSON object, which always have the name, and then I assume actions to do when a feature, when a step is, I don't know, I don't know what is, what is disabled and, oh, sorry, uh, this is the step a feature which has a property disable to disable a feature, enable to enable features. Here it's enabling these features. So that's how it looks like. And um, some concerns about how to deal with very large files. I also oh, we are also removing the cache descriptor. Um, the cache descriptor um, the cache descriptor was a file. Um, is a final one, the cache.dat that uh, is um, uh, is caching all the um, feature states for each tenant. The idea being when we start Orchard, we don't want to do some many lookups in the database and many joins. Uh, so in Orchard 1, we have an XML file containing all the features to enable on startup. Okay, for all, all the tenants, for performance reasons. But in Orchard 2, because this is already stored as a single document, uh, we don't need to do that. So we are we have removed this cache, and uh, we can add it later. We think it's important in terms of pair, but I don't think so, because we'll still have to read only a single document from database. So it should be very quick. So we remove the cache descriptor, you see here. Uh, then the questions was about the um, size of the recipe. Um, we should also try uh, with many content items, like uh, hundreds of thousands of content items, just to compare it to Orchard 1 in terms of performance for uh, creating content items from the recipe, uh, in terms of memory also. Um, he knows how to optimize uh, the reading of the big files for JSON.NET. And, and and we also talk about having an include step or an include uh, a way to include recipes from other recipes. We have it in Orchard 1, so we need that too. And I was suggesting also to be able to use, to include a recipe and be able to pass some parameters to the recipe while importing. This way we could, we could have um, uh, a recipe that can be reused multiple times in another one with different parameters. Just, I think it's, it should be, it could, it could be useful. Um, okay, so that's the recipe. That's a pull request, so uh, we'll try it and merge it. So recipes should be done uh, and integrated in, in master very soon now. Um, they are working. And then the other pull request is from uh, Sergio, who's working on OpenID and Auth2 for Web API and also authentication, but authentication is not, um, uh, I mean, user authentication for external provider is not yet supported. He's just trying to protect Web APIs using uh, JO tokens. Uh, and actually, Kevin Chalet, who is known as the name Pinpoint Towns, who implemented uh, open IDICs and, uh, well, implemented um, some OWIN middlewares to support that. Uh, is helping him and giving him advice. You see, it's a very active uh, pull request, uh, and he's making progress, so that's good. Uh, so we should, uh, and he made it as a different module, so we should have uh, OpenID support um, directly with Orchard Core. Okay, so if you want to look at it, that's very interesting. And this is also soon in side Orchard 2. Um, so that was, I don't want to miss about it. Demos. Jasmine. No, I can't say Jasmine. It's Jasmine or Rasma. Jasmine. Well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm making you a presenter. You can go. So when do we ship the new theme? Um, soon. 
Can you see my screen? Yet. Janos, please write something when you can. Nothing so far. You need to click the button, right? Present. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Should see it now. I can yellows. Good to go. Okay. So uh, we did a lot of things uh, recently. Uh, I tried to uh, fix all the bugs that that were that were there, so we can uh, merge this on on the dev branch or something like that. Um, uh, I'm not sure what has been presented so far, so I'm going to uh, show what I did recently. So. I added something uh, to to display notifications. It's a JavaScript plugin. It's called Toaster. So we're an example. If I want to uh, migrate media files, if I click on this button, I had a progress bar and you can have notifications like that on the bottom. I had this also on um, the email settings when you want to test if your server is working. I'm just going to send one. It's going to tell me that uh, I need to provide something. Yeah, I'm not sure everyone can see that. I know where to look at. It's at the bottom right, but I have some pictures, mine and yours, actually. So, yeah, if you do that, this will be better. Yeah. So, do it again. So, it's a client side notification uh, script. Whenever we do yeah. some Ajax code, we can display notification there. Yeah, so we know what is happening because before we, we needed to, to wait and there was nothing happening. Okay. So we can use that uh, almost everywhere where there's J uh, Ajax uh, requests. Um, I, I headed back the, the, the left menu uh, with a flyout uh, like that. Because we needed to um, to keep uh, the styling that uh, was uh, in the Emirati team. So, um, like I said to to Sipke, um, I'm going to add a, a button uh, a button there to just uh, change back uh, the menu like it was before. So we will have the the preference to to like have two different uh, layout for for the me the menus. The other menu is, uh, is using um, an accordion, uh, like uh, what Antoine had, had, had done. So right now uh, I needed to revert back to to this me menu, and uh, I'm going to add it uh, this week. So why do we need two different menus? Can't we use just one? Yes, yeah, so we can. One. But um, some people uh, ask you to to have. Um, I think ma mainly mainly the problem was that uh, we couldn't. Um, so if I want blue, will you make two buttons, one for green and one for blue? Or can we just decide a color and one menu and one yeah. font and... Sure, uh, we could. Uh, I mean, uh, I think that that's you that asked you to have back this menu. So I think Antoine... Uh, war, oh. war, yeah. So, okay, so it's not just about me. So can you just send this, uh, two screenshots or videos about one menu and the other? Advantage, pros and cons, and we decide which one we want. 
Yeah, because sure. it's more work to do to have two of them, and I don't remember this discussion. So, and I but don't, we, also, I don't we also need to have uh, it working on responsive uh, screens, yep. and, uh, mobile screens. Yeah, how do I, how do I switch uh, screens? Because my my other uh, screen is uh, touch. Uh, I can touch with my my hands. I wanted to show that uh, we can. Uh, I, before we couldn't uh, like uh, tap on those uh, root menu items to open the sub menu. So I fixed this the, this afternoon, and uh, now it works. So that's mainly why we, we were not using this me me menu, I think, because also there there's the fact that. Um, uh, there's a default action uh, when you click on the root menu items, uh, like uh, on the blog here. Uh, if you click on the root menu item and there's no blogs created, it is going to, uh, before it was going to go to the action to create a new blog. Here we need to add this menu item there in the flyout me in the sub menu. Which we 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 have we didn't have before. And can you show it with a lower resolution? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, can you try uh, using F12 and yes. <laughs> Maybe iPad. I mean, uh, I, I did some uh, adjustments for um, cell phones last week, so it's going to to work. But there are still things to do on that side. So you click there, and then uh, yeah, if I click there, I can show uh, the sidebar. So this is the accordion behavior. Yeah. So what Antoine did is just use this to uh, for for all the time. Oh, I see. So it was also an accordion in non-mobile. Yes. Clients. Yes, so because why... the, the flyout takes too much space. Okay. But I mean, you why... need to have you need to have a bar here uh, to click on those icons. So if I was I, I, I were going to click on this, you maybe. So this is good, it. no? I think when you tap on this uh, uh, hamburger, then you see the menu appearing. Is there an issue with that? I think Antoine. No. No. Okay, so so on on mobile yeah, this is good, and you say when we have a bigger screen, when we there is a flyout. That's it. That's the only difference. Yes. Okay, so this is good, and why do we need a second menu or a button to select the menu? Well, the idea was that um, <clears throat> as you can see, currently this menu takes a lot of a lot of vertical space, so there was a, there was a, a suggestion by someone to maybe uh, show the, the the captions of each menu item to the right of each icon, so it would take up uh -huh. more horizontal space uh, to save vertical space. That was the idea, and I believe that was the only reason uh, to do that. But maybe it's not worth the the um, uh, the effort because I like this as well. Yeah, I think this is fine. Why? As long as we can scroll, is there a scroll bar we can add and to scroll the menu? Yeah, there's a scroll bar, and we can we have two options actually. Maybe that should be a theme setting where you can individually uh, scroll the menu or the main screen, or the the menu can be um, non-fixed. So currently it's it's fixed, uh, but if it's non-fixed, it will scroll alongside. Yeah, with the I I don't see any reason why we would want. The both of them to be linked, because when you scroll your content, then your menu goes up, and that's weird. And when you want to go down in your menu, then you have to scroll down your content. That's weird. If they are independent, I think that's better. 
right? Independent so, or interdependent? In, independent. Independent. In, independent, right? Well, <clears throat> I guess it depends on, on what you're used to. Um, initially, when they were independent, uh, it, it was confusing to me at first, but it, you get used to it because ultimately you always need to move your mouse cursor to one mm -hmm. of the menu items to click it. So. Uh, you just need to get used to do that first before scrolling. And I'm, I'm okay. currently used to just scroll down to the menu and then, because that's the way Orchard, the current Orchard yep. admin theme I works. See. But um, that's, that's there, the deal. There was but, also, sorry. Uh, there was also a problem uh, with uh, having them dependent on, on each other because uh, here the, the footer was never on the bottom. Yeah. So it's better to be independent, technically also. Else, uh, if, if they are independent, uh, um, this footer will always uh, be, uh, I mean, we could have, we could have something, a hack to, to say like, uh, um, the, the left menu has, has this height and then it needs to be yeah. Uh, the same height, uh, min height right. should be the same so that the footer gets down, but uh, it's not really uh, great. So who's against the fact that we have independent menus, that we keep the big buttons, and that what you showed in the mobile uh, view is working with accordions? So I think everything I saw here is perfect. What is perfect is good enough. Yeah, it's good enough because there are still things to to figure out. I think um, we we made this uh, a rough uh, a rough yeah, pass. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that we should change anything just for the sake of changing or pro of or having two options. So I think it's good. Who disagrees? Also, this theme is uh, is maintained by uh, uh, Miguel from Foxy Themes. So okay. and it, yeah, the so less we overwrite, the less we change, the better. Uh, it is to make the easier it is to maintain, and, and as you say, it currently works good enough. Okay, and I so really I'm like it. The way big it's... icons, uh, big icons, and um, caption under. Okay, I'm writing down um, scroll label menu independent from content and mobile. View is okay. So the big icons caption under fly out for fly out. Mobile view is um, using an accordion. Are you write it accordion? Thank you. So, <coughs> this, who is against that? We have something to say against that. Nobody. So I say go for it. Don't try to make another one with an option and a button and whatever. Good. Um, Okay. Something else? Yes. There, there's uh, this idea that I, that I had because I, I watched at uh, Craft CMS uh, the other week, and uh, um, normally uh, when you create a new item here, it's going to have just a, a button to go on on a different page to create those content items. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a list. So uh, I thought maybe we could do like Craft CMS and have a list of of the content types that we could create. Uh, directly here. And when so I click I'm, on new on the top left, what happens on the menu? Yeah, no, right now I, I didn't finish it, but... Uh, but on the top I left can... menu, the new, what yeah. happens? Same thing. Yeah, so that's the same thing. But normally on this page we had like uh, create new. And it's going. It, it was opening another, yeah, it's another page. Yeah. page yeah. I don't remember the difference between. Uh, uh, yeah, I think there's a metadata to appear on the menu or not. I think if it's creatable, 
and if it's not, it appears on the other page. Yeah. And there's yeah, also the question of filters, which uh, I think we we speak. Uh, I, I haven't had the time to finish uh, either, but uh, filters. We need to figure out something because um, if I'm I'm uh, on a smaller uh, device like uh, iPhone five here, I remove them, but uh, maybe iPad. Uh, we 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 don't have space for for putting uh, filters. Yeah, so the, the, you did something with the left colon with all the filters. I think Sipko liked it. Um, personally, I prefer the one which will expand just below this zone, um, not on the left side. Um, uh. The, uh, I use the page aside, which is already in the MRT team. That's why it was on the left side. Mm -hmm. um, we could uh, easily uh, just float it on the right side. So I um, want to, to hear people what they think. So do you have an example where, where it shows on the left? Uh, I had I removed the comments from the code because I wanted maybe to maybe show the uh, Amaretti theme. The yeah, live preview. Sure. So just to explain the issue, on a page like the content items page, we might have many filters like the search, like the type, order by. Uh, and, and some screens might be even uh, worse. Um, so the idea is, uh, instead of having, because in Orchard 1, in the current theme, uh, it's on a single line, and when it overflows the line, that is very ugly, it goes back on the second line, and it's, it's really ugly, and we don't even see what which button applies on what, and with bulk actions also, it's a, it's a mess. So show, so he's, uh, he's got a suggestion to have all the filters on the left side of the content, so here. Well, so when you well, click the, on filters, it shows the pane and with all the filters. The, the, there's two different headers for uh, for the admin team. Here I use uh, the Bootstrap classes, and uh, I think uh, the guys have done something with the audit trail, which was using uh, also a flex boxes. If I'm just opening this page, history, I think. And I'm switching back to mobile view. Here, I mean, they, they, they just stack them on, one yeah. on top of the other, but it's it's like taking so much space that yeah, we but don't even uh, see at the same time, in terms of limitation, that's fine. It's stacking. So my my idea was that we will show the simple ones, and then have a button called advanced, and it will just show up more more of them, and it will just stack also like this. So, yeah. So the the way will be that there is no change to do in the code. It's just no. This is the zone to apply the filters. Put as many of uh, as you want. Just size it and group them using the bootstrap classes. And there is just a toggle to say this is the standard one or this is the advanced one. So you click on advanced, and more of them show up. Yeah, I think about the the page aside because uh, some people will want to make this extensible so they will be able to have add their own filters. Uh, that's why. Oh, but can't we I mean, do that with the section in the same in the content section? Add sure, new ones. Sure. It's just about creating a shape zone called filters, and maybe two zones called filters and advanced filters. And the advanced filters, when there is something inside, you render a button called show, hide, advanced filters, and done. Yeah, yeah that, like this. Like yeah, this, but all the time. Yeah, it's showing on the top on mobile device, and it's showing mm -hmm. on the left, uh, right side or left side on on desktop. So Or on the top yeah. also on desktop. I don't know if, well, if it's better on the left and technically it's the same thing, I don't care. Yeah, it could be a collapsible panel, something that you can just close. I just think we need an advanced button to show more things. The default should be there. There is nothing to do. But when I want to see more filters, if there are more filters, then I should just click 
more filters, advanced, or I don't know. Yeah. And something appears. And for that, it needs two zones, two shapes. Then whether it's on left, right, or I mean the advanced one, because the standard one should be at the top right today, I think. But the advanced one, the advanced uh, zone, left, right, or middle, it's up to voting. Whatever people think is better, left look ni looks nice if it's if it's uh, going on the on the middle when we are on a small device. That's fine. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I started asking some people about that, and it's uh, it's tough to find uh, the right balance. Um, one, two, three, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, thirteen participants today. Type left, right, or middle where you want to see the advanced filter. <laughs> you can type also just man. And Antonin Sipke. Sipke, right, left, middle. Wow. Yeah, for mobile it will be top. There is no solution because there is no other option for mobile because it's um, um, it's small. So right, right, left, middle, left, right. We have three right, two left, one middle. I say middle. So well, so far it's just on the sides, left and right, more right than left. Okay, good, on the side. And if it's a mobile, it will show up on the top. That's good. But everyone agrees with the advanced button to show more filters if there are more. So we try yeah. to keep the, the default one on a single line, and um, and yeah, modules the most can target. Use ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but modules can independently and independently target either the default or the advanced one, and. Uh, yeah. Then we should yeah use the the styling to provide a nice inline form grouped and everything and the sizes and that should that will flow by itself. Yeah. Good. Thank you. No problem. Great, great. Um, did we have anything else? Uh, yes, we have other topics. So we'll uh, stop the demo right now. Fine. Um, other topics. Um, just well harvest this one we don't have to do let's encrypt let's encrypt i had it uh, for last week the idea is that um what's happening here gallery.orchardproject.net i had to renew the cell certificate because it had been a year um so i was like okay uh, let's renew it and instead of that, I tried, okay, let's try, let's encrypt. So let's encrypt is a, an organization which provides free um, SL certificates. Uh, they are valid for uh, something like three months or six months, uh, but you can renew them as much as you want and have as many as you want. Um, so I tried it uh, and it worked. So if we look at the settings, 
we should see that it's let's encrypt certificate and it worked uh, on that and it was actually easy to do um, as long as you work on Azure there is a site extension so I did that on the gallery site there is a site extension which is like a small sub app that adds that is added to your app from a NuGet gallery that will do everything for you just provide the information of the domain um, you just need to create a service principle in your uh, Azure uh, Azure subscription which is actually a an application account uh, so that uh, an API account so that the the site extension can connect to a subscription and do whatever it needs to do like downloading certificates installing certificate and things like this and uh, it works very nice nicely and also it creates it's creating a web job which will run regularly to update the certificate from let's encrypt so when it's going to um, to be, to be invalid, it will query a new certificate and install it again and switch to this new certificate. So it's very nice. So it works. Just to let you know, it saved a few hundred bucks to um, the Net Foundation, and now we don't have to worry about it anymore. So that's very interesting. Just to let you know, um, harvest. Harvest. So uh, George and Sipke have been uh, uh, pushing me. On uh, harvest, good job, guys. It didn't work. Uh, what's the status? So we have, I know we have offer for Miami. Okay. And um, I have two hotels, or I guess three hotels. I'm working on Miami right now. I have one in Coconut Grove. I have one and two on South Beach. So if we're okay with saying that the first or second week of October is a date, I can get the Royal Palm to give us a proposal. They didn't want to do anything without a definite date. What I saw from your emails was ten grand. Oh, you got you got my emails. Yeah. Yes. You I mind just my emails? <laughs> I don't know what to answer. That's the that's the issue. I said, oh, yeah. go pay for it. Uh, yeah. So that's what I saw. And tell me if I'm wrong. What I saw is ten k for. Yeah, that was for the Mayfair Food token plus Pro. meeting. Yeah, and then the hotel rooms are about a hundred hundred and ten dollars a night. So it's shoulder season in Miami right now, so it's actually a good time. Or that at that time, it's a good time to go because it's right before the rush. But the weather's already nice. Um, I have read other things about Miami. Have like you? what? I've lived there. <laughs> okay, but there is a new thing called mosquito with Zika virus and exterminations of mosquitoes and the art. Um, well, I just got back from Brazil, so you can't talk, talk to me about Zika virus. If I probably okay. already have it, so uh, that's fair. But I, again, you know, I we're mosquito repellent. I, 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 and anyway, the the outbreak is nowhere near the beach. So uh, the outbreak is in Hialeah, which is over by the airport. So don't go there. Yeah, I don't worry for for myself. I worry for the people who might be worried actually about it. That's my concern, that people would be concerned. OK. Um, well, let me, I'll, I'll get the final, I mean, and then at least you'll have the proposals. We can make a decision. But that's that's what, that's the, the the number I'm trending toward is, is that 10K number. So I yep. think that's achievable for us. That's, yeah, that's doable. Uh, it's still on the expensive uh, side. Uh, I think, Zip, Zipke, you sent me an email this morning just mentioning just meeting rooms. Correct. Yeah, and and it it includes a, a discount for the rooms. I think it was around seventy nine dollars. It sounds very cheap. And how did it compare to uh, George's uh, suggestion in terms of? I have yet to look at the uh, picture. I, I just received an email from uh, from that guy, and I because I didn't have time to look at uh, at how it looks. But in terms because of pricing, it's uh, it's much much cheaper, obviously. But George's location will look like perfect on the beach, and the hotel wasn't is on the yeah, beach. Yeah, so so George told me that that location is uh, one and a half hours driving from the beach or something. Uh, but Orlando it's, it's is inland. It's not it's not on the water. Oh, so from Sipco, it was Orlando. It wasn't Miami. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's totally different experience. Uh, and I do I do have another offer uh, from that is in Miami, but that offer was $12,000, so I asked uh, if they could do anything about that. Um, <clears throat> I'm uh, awaiting a response 
but that, that's that's the Marriott Hotel, which is uh, quite mm-hmm. expensive. So, which which Marriott was that? Uh, I'll have to look it up. So that's the uh, that's that's the that's another one. No, we we can discuss it later. We don't have to. Okay. To discuss um, now. Yeah. The, the well. I, uh, yeah, we don't have to share what you found, George. Yeah, the only uh, thing is that 10k just for the meeting rooms and the f- and the food is just uh, lunch, right? Well, it's it's a 10k spend, so you know, that would probably include lunch. It would include you know snacks. It would include you know the the way that both of them seem to be priced is they give you the meeting room for free as long as you spend ten thousand yeah. dollars in food and beverage so okay uh, so it's not like it's you know we don't get anything for that you know we, we it would be kind of probably like we had in Alicante they have a, they do a lunch for us uh, or they do snacks or hors d'oeuvres or something like that for us so mm-hmm. um, you know the lowest one at 17k I told them that 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 wasn't doable and they're under renovation which I think is kind of, kind of sucks. And is it close to the city center or are there things to do around the hotel? So if you um, for instance to switch to yeah. free lunch and free dinner? Yeah, um, Miami Beach is, I mean it's very much like Alicante. It's actually there's more more restaurants and there's an art museum, there's Lincoln Road, there's shopping. I mean it's it's a, I mean, it's like Santa Monica. There's a lot of stuff to do there. Okay. Uh, and it's like a five, maybe ten minute drive. Downtown Miami is, is kind of coming back. It's not as you know, when I lived there, you didn't really want to go down there at night. But there's a new art museum. There's a lot of interesting things going on in Miami now. Um, so it's, uh, but yeah, all that stuff is like a five, ten minute drive max. Okay. Uh, from the uh, yeah. So I will will continue this conversation offline. Uh, please call me on Skype. Okay. <laughs> um, and 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 yeah, we look at it. Yeah, I like to to see if there are other options. Because yeah, if you pay 10k of food, we give you the meeting room. Good. Mm-hmm. If we are 50 people, 10k of food, it's 200. <laughs> no, no, seriously. I know. If we are 50 people, it's 200. How much is that? Yeah, it's 200 dollars per head of food uh, for of food. two days. That that's good restaurants you can have for the same price. I mean, come hungry. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, right, let's discuss after we can we can get on a Skype call after and discuss. Okay. There, there's Good. some numbers that that might bring that down. Okay. Thank you. So I have to go. Also, everything now. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, see you on Thursday, and also next.